mistake. All right, Rob, let's get into it. And let's start with the NCAA. And they made a decision to extend the spring athletes, the spring sports, which have been canceled, baseball, softball, things like that. Those athletes, the seniors, will get another year of eligibility. And I applaud them for that. I think that's the right move. I think it's a great move. Those kids, I mean, it, it, I don't even think it's like, it, it should be even controversial or I think it's a no-brainer. I mean, if a kid got hurt and had to be, you know, red-shirted or didn't play for a year, he still get his fourth year of eligibility. So I think that, that this is clearly the right move. I don't think it's a difficult move in the least bit. Now, the other thing they're looking at, though, are the winter sports athletes, mainly men's and women's basketball, because that's a winter sport. And they're trying to decide whether or not they should give those seniors an extra year of eligibility. And, Rob, I say emphatically no. Not, not, nothing against basketball players, of course. I have nothing against them at all and the, the other winter sports athletes. My point is just that you've played your whole year. I mean, they, they essentially played the entire, you know, early part of the season where you're playing non-conference t- opponents and you've played essentially your full conference schedule. You did. All you missed out on was the postseason and the postseason tournament isn't for a the given. conference. Right. It's not a given. There's only 68 of the 300-some-odd teams. There were plenty of kids it. who don't play in the postseason in their college career and go home. Yep. Plenty. Yep. So you sound like you're with me. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that the uh, original during the spring, that's a layup. That, right, that's, that right. takes nothing. That, that, that's not like, oh, wow, they came up with some creative idea. Those kids didn't get a chance to play at all. Exactly. So, so let's, so let's that's not a, celebrate right. them for that decision either. Right, that's right. what I'm saying. It's that's a layup. You, right. don't, you don't even need to be a part of college, ba- college sports to understand those kids had something taken away from them. But uh, as far as the uh, – Basketball and, and whatnot, I, I, I'm in agreement. I, I just don't understand uh, why you would do that. To come back for a whole – to start another season and then still no no guarantee you're going to play in the postseason? Right. You know what I mean? So right. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get that at all. I, I mean, really let, let's keep it real. When these seniors don't graduate or, or whatever year they may be, is there an uproar? Oh, they didn't graduate. They didn't get to experience graduation. No. Nobody really cares. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now you care that they don't get to play in an NCAA tournament, which for many of them would just be one game anyway? No, it shows the priorities are off. And I get it. Again, it'd be great if a Cassius Winston could play in another NCAA tournament for Michigan State and, and all these guys. I understand that. And a lot of these guys won't go to the NBA. But it's just an unfortunate situation that all of us are dealing with. And other people have had similar things. I brought it up the other day about the, the people who worked hard for the 1980 Olympics. Yep. And the United States boycotted. They, they didn't get that back, right? That's right. They didn't. It happens sometimes. And unfortunately, it happens in your situation and your time. And things have happened. We've seen strikes in certain sports. You talk about uh, teams that uh, I always remember the 1994 Montreal Expos. You remember they had that great team and they had to the strike. They never yep. got to go to the World Series. Expos never won anything. It could have changed everything. Maybe they still have a franchise there, Chris, had they won that World Series in 1994. Right. None of it happened. Right. It just didn't happen. And we're talking about, you know, because you've seen a lot of people put this in the language of it's an experience that the kids are missing out on. And I get it. But a lot of these schools also, Rob, are canceling the graduations. You know, the, well, and, the, the, and you know the that very. You, but you know what? You have two daughters who are who are ready to graduate come May, and you might miss out well, on Michigan, both of them. Michigan's canceled theirs. They're, they're, so there's my, there's my daughter in Michigan won't won't walk. You know, she'll graduate, but she won't walk. There'll be no ceremony. That's the moment that yep. you you know what I mean. You put in four years. It's a proud moment for your mom and your dad yep. and your friends and family. I mean. It's what it's all about, you know, after the, the blood, sweat, and tears for four years. Yep. So that, that's, a, that's something, but I'm sure, you know, you understand with what's going on, you can't put all those people together. Absolutely, absolutely. So it, it just is what it is, and, and I'd be interested to see what the 
listeners think, but and we'll give you a, your chance as always to weigh in on that. The other thing, Rob, is that there was an interesting article in which I believe he's the vice president of the NCAA. Uh, yes, Dan Gavitt. He told the Associated Press that they actually were thinking Wednesday night when Rudy Gobert got the, you know, it was revealed that he had the coronavirus. And then even into Thursday morning, that maybe they could salvage the tournament in a 16 team as opposed to 68 teams, 16 team tournament that only lasted a weekend. So you'd play Friday and Saturday, and then there'd be a championship game on Monday night. My thinking is that would have been nice. Like b- before Rudy Gobert got the coronavirus, I think that would have been a legitimate you know, uh, possibility. And I think it would have been fine. I think, it, you know, we would have got a little bit of March Madness. Um, Obviously, all the teams wouldn't have been able to participate, but I think I I certainly would have been fine with just 16. I would have. I wouldn't have. I would have. I would have had an issue, and there would have been a lot of schools not participating. And if they would say, well, if you could put 16 together, why can't it be 32? Or why can't it be 12? Well, because it's a weekend. No, I'm just saying, but there'll be a lot of people who would be salty, probably more than who would be happy. Yeah, yeah, but I I do it. I think it'd be good, and I I think, again, you got to be an adult about it and understand, if we're going to do this thing in one weekend, we can only have 16 teams. And so I would have been fine with it, but, again, once Rudy Gobert got the coronavirus, you know, there was no possibility of that happening. That would have been a a really bad look, and not to mention dangerous for the athletes and, and the people that were in attendance wouldn't have been fans, I assume, but just, you know, staff and people like that. But I, I would have liked that. It would have it would have not been obviously what March Madness usually is, but I think it would have I think it would have been great, but obviously they couldn't have done it, you know, once the test came in. We want you to weigh in on the NCAA. Let's start with Tim in Nebraska. Tim, welcome to the I Couple. Taking my call. Hey, uh, I'll get to my point about the NCAA, but I just want to say I was I can relate to Rob because I just tried to go to Walmart and the toilet paper thing. Okay, that's fine. I got some toilet paper, but I wanted to get a bag of potatoes, and everybody is freaking out yes. and treating it like this country is going to go into martial law lockdown, <laughs> and we're not going to be able to get our everyday essentials. I, I mean, this it, is a joke. It it is unbelievable, and I don't know seriously, and I thought about it. I'm not sure if it had something to do with this is people's payday and they just want to load up. You know what I mean? Like they got paid today. I don't yeah. think so, I, I don't, though. I, huh? I don't think so. I think I people are just panicking. Just, people are panicking. Oh, my. We, 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 it's human nature that if we feel like we're losing control of something, we go to the complete extreme and freak out as, as human nature. And it's a joke. Everybody that's stockpiling and hoarding all this stuff, they need to relax and chill because everybody that just wants to do their normal grocery shopping can't do it now because my nope. neighbor's got a thousand rolls of toilet paper stocked up in his freaking garage. Well, anyway, Rob, Rob, you remember we saw this uh, with Y2K. Remember 20 years right. ago? You uh, had yep. people panicking, thinking the world people was People had no idea. Years. I remember sitting there. I was married then, and... We, we didn't go out that night. You remember, people didn't know what to expect. Right. And we were just sitting there, and two, the year 2000 came, and we looked at each other, and nothing happened. Right. And we just were like, <laughs> Were okay, you thinking you... something might happen? Yes, because really? that's, what, that's what people were yeah, saying. everybody was going nuts. I like, didn't oh, the, think so, but, Oh, the you computers know. won't work, yeah, everything. Yeah. You're going to lose all your money in the <laughs> bank account. Do you remember all that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go to Keith in Illinois. Keith, you're on with Chris and Rob, the I couple. Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? We're great, man. How are you? I'm doing okay. Hey, I'm I'm gonna put it to you like this: that fifth year senior stuff that sounded pretty good. Get the fellas that eligibility. Hold on. So you gonna what about the teams that don't make the tournament? You gonna get their seniors? Now, as far as that's concerned, uh, as far as that's concerned, I live in Illinois and I work at Bradley. Okay, that would hurt me very, very no, bad. No, no, hold on. I'm asking you this. Let's say, let's just. I'm just gonna throw out these schools. Let's say Illinois would have made the tournament, so you want to yeah. give their seniors an extra year. But let's say Bradley would not have made the tournament. You going to give their seniors an extra year? Yes, I think you what? could. What? I think you could. Stop I would want it, that Keith. to happen. Stop it. Yeah. 
no, it. no. I, I'm a little biased on you, that. You soft-hearted. Was, That's what you are. Yeah, Come on, I man. guess you're they, right. They, they played the whole season. They had the whole season. Yeah, this, was the, this was the postseason. Right. They probably played 30 games or so. You're talking about the Missouri Valley. That would be very hard for a Missouri Valley Conference team to get more than one bid. And winning the conference would have been great. All right, let's go to Isaac in Utah. Isaac, are you as soft as Keith? Hey, what's up, guys? What's up? How are you? Good, good. Good. Hey, first of all, mine was about the the tournament. Okay, Um, the sixteen game, sixteen team tournament, sixteen teams. I think that'd be I think that'd be such a bad idea. I mean, I'm from Utah. With Utah State winning the championship game, you know they wouldn't be in that sixteen team, even though they like. They deserve to be in there. They won the championship game. I mean, would they make it past the first or second round? Probably not. But, but that's I mean, the problem with 16. I agree. I think there would be a lot of people, a lot of uh, schools that would be like, oh, okay, so wait a minute. We did this, and you're, you're not picking us, but you're picking another school who maybe didn't win the conference champ or, or you know what I mean, didn't do as well, but they're a bigger name school or something. I, you you would have exactly. had to be really like – I, I could I would say no more than two teams for a conference. You know what I mean? Like no more than that. Maybe not even that for for most of them. But I think you would have had to do that. So a lot of blue bloods who finished third in their conference or something wouldn't have made it. Um, so I, I think it would have been good. There's always arguments, even when they have 68 or 64. We're always well, you know you're right, and that's why arguments. trying to cut it down to 16, Chris is going to be even worse. It would have been it would have been crazy, but that would have gave people something to talk about. That's that's all people want at this point. <laughs> Let's go to Landon, also in Utah. Landon, you're on with the Odd Couple. Yeah, hey, thanks guys for taking my call. Yeah, um, I I share the same sentiment. I think the, the uh, 16 teams is a terrible idea. And the reason is Sam Merrill. Sam Merrill played three games in three days, beat San Diego State with a buzzer. He never was taken out of that game. He deserves to be in the championship more than anybody. I would just give him a whole new season if he wanted it. He had an opportunity to showcase his talents in front of the whole nation, and and he's going to miss that. And if you cut it to 16 teams, it hurts that much more. All right, that's an interesting no, take. Well, the other thing is this, Rob. You would have had to have – because let's say you got 16 teams. So Friday you play – or I guess they were saying it would start Thursday. So Thursday you would have been able to play eight games and then Friday four and then two on Sunday – or Saturday. And then, okay, so I, I was thinking you might have to play two games one day, but not so. Mateo in Fresno, you're on with the odd couple. What's going on, Rob and Chris? Long time listener, first time caller. Wow. Thank What's you. What's happening? What's going on, guys? Uh just want to talk about the, the 16 teams. Uh, what do you guys think about uh, – now, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't there 31 automatic bids? Uh, why can't they just extend it to the 31 automatic bids with a, a random or a play-in for the 32nd team, make it a 32-team tournament? A 16-team tournament is going to cut out half of those automatic qualifiers just by proxy. And, how and you would have to. Tournament? And 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 how do they come up with those 16 teams? Like you just said, there's there's 15 that deserve to be there just off of that. And then how do you tell them no? Then they feel like we got shafted. Yeah, right. I mean, and I understand there's a 68-team tournament. So 30 plus are going to get a little right. Jilted. Even I, if you do 32, people are going to be upset. I mean, but they all, have the automatic qualifier. But you always have people that are going to be upset. Yeah, but the you team, would have a lot more with 16. No, you would. You would. But, I mean, obviously this is fictional. None of it's happening. But I, I just think it would have been good if they could have salvaged it and do it over a weekend. That would have been nice. But, you know, obviously it didn't happen. Let's go to Bill in Colorado. Bill, you're on with Chris and Rob. Is Bill there? Going once. He's gone. Let, let's go to Trevor in Sacramento. Trevor, you're on with Chris and Rob. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. What's so up? I agree with you guys. I think that would be a, a pretty good move by the NCAA if they gave the uh, another year of eligibility for their seniors. But my question it, for it, y'all is – Basketball seniors? Yeah, yes, yes. But uh, tell me why. Tell, tell us why they – because we don't think they sh- – we think the spring sports are f- – of course – 
But the basketball players had a full season. They just missed the postseason tournament and the, the NCAA tournament. None of right, which is right. Guaranteed. So why do you think they deserve – they played probably 25 to 30 games already. Why do they deserve another full year of eligibility? So I guess I'm kind of on both sides of the argument. One of the reasons why I think they should get it is because, obviously, you know, the grand prize, which is the NCAA tournament, every senior is going to want to play in that, especially if their team hadn't been there before. But the other side of the argument is, what about those incoming freshmen that were to come in and potentially there's some playing time that now they're not going to get because there's a starting senior who gets that extra year of eligibility. I'm curious to see what you guys think about that, if that were to potentially happen. Well, it's going to happen with the uh, the uh, spring sports. So in baseball, you're going to have that very situation. I think it just is what it is, Rob. I mean, you well, know, you're right. gonna, it's just more competition, but – you know, I, I know that certain spots you only have so many spots for scholarships. They'll just um, have to figure it out. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, because this is so uncharted and so different that you just have to. You'd probably have to, uh, uh, you know, overlook a, or uh, a, a lot of the rules that are already in place because it just would be a right. madhouse to figure it out. Right, no question. Former NFL veteran, our good buddy Ephraim Salam. Ephraim, what's up, man? What's happening? How you doing, man? How y'all we, doing? We are we are good. How are you? You hanging in there? I'm hanging in there, man. Y'all safe? You know, you guys are of the age of the at risk. Uh, <laughs> Why you got to put that out in the, in the us, universe? One of us, not me. Why you got to put that in the universe? Rob Parker. Basically you, Rob. I mean, you, got, you might need to go home and sit down, man. <laughs> I'm all right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. But let's get right to it. Even, now, let me ask you this. When you were a player in the NFL and you played – Almost twenty years, or or what? Twelve years. Um, thirteen, man. Th- 13. thirteen. My bad. Okay, thirteen years. Don't shortchange. I him. know. I know. I know. I y'all sensitive that. about that, right? That has very. That has ramifications. I get it. Um, were you involved with the union at all? Um, no, not in terms of being a uh, a union rep or anything like okay. that. Okay. Because I'm wondering, what do you think about this current, you know, CBA that's on? you know, that's proposed, being proposed, and obviously is going to be vote, voted on within the next couple of days by the players. Are you in favor of it? You think it's a good one for them? Or you think they should vote no? I'm not in favor of expanding uh, games. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think you need to do that. Uh, I think uh, the full workload of 17 total regular season weeks, uh, meaning 16 games and one bye week for each team, I think that's sufficient. If you want to cut down a uh, a preseason game and just put it to three preseason games, I also think that's uh, sufficient. But in terms of you know adding another game, adding more teams to the playoffs, right? Possibly teams getting in there that didn't deserve yep. to get in there. I'm not, I'm not I'm not for that. All for you know for bigger profits for the owners. I'm I'm, I'm not I'm okay with that. Now you were a player um, that you know a lot of these guys are saying they want the extra money. That's why they're willing to go to the 17 games and even potentially make more money by making the playoffs. Do you see their point, or you still don't think it's worth the 17th game? No, I don't think it's worth it. But I see their point. That'll always get current players to vote. If you continue to say more money for you, I mean that's a no-brainer. They they do that. Like back when we were trying to negotiate lifetime health care ten years ago uh, with the current CBA, they threw out more money, so the health care went away. And until we get serious about that, so current players aren't thinking about five years after they retire, ten years after they retire. Re- retire. The nature of the game won't allow you to even think like that. Well, right? and, and, so, and that's – go ahead, Ephraim, I'm sorry. Go ahead, you got it, you got it. I was just going to say, well, well, even if if I'm the owners and I see the union bickering and splintered, you, we, we got a W. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. the, even on the executive board, they, they, they're, they're bickering. Players coming out, big-time players saying, dude, this is a bad deal. You got to have one voice and you got you to gotta be able to sell the idea that, that whether you're – a guy who who comes to the league who gets a cup of coffee or a sweet roll or a guy who plays 20 years, we all have to be in it together, but that's not the way it is in the NFL, and that's why you guys have never gotten the deal that you deserve. And you know why? Because the the pay gap is so big. People really don't realize 
that everybody who's playing professional sports, especially in the NBA and uh, NFL, excuse me, they're not millionaires. You got guys who play five, six, seven years and not be millionaires, right? So Demora Smith said it shocked me. He said sixty percent, more than sixty percent of the players are making the minimum. Yeah, that's that's the only way you can build a team. If you're paying a quarterback a hundred and thirty-four million dollars and a hundred and five of a guarantee, where is the other money gonna go? <laughs> that was like, baffling. Honestly, when you when, when you really look at it, you know you got a, a, a salary cap that you have to use a good portion of it, like two hundred plus million, and a hundred of like you can play with the numbers, but just think about it. Think out. Think about how much the Dallas Cowboys are going to spread between three players in the upcoming year. Think yeah. about that. Not not even talking about the high paid offensive line or any of that. So what? Where's the money for the other guys? E from one thing, and Rob and I are, feel strongly that the players deserve lifetime health care and should fight for it. But whenever we end up talking with a player who's either currently involved with the union or was in was involved when they were a player with the union they can, they talk like that's not possible and that's and they don't need it what they get is good enough where where do you stand on that you said they should fight for lifetime health care where does this I'm, notion that you can't get it come from and is it realistic i, I, I vehemently oppose that notion and i went, you know I what i'm to you know what we're talking about right, though, right? right. i know exactly there. what you're yeah. talking about i was at the NFL offices uh, last summer, and I brought that up to the um, um, uh, the, the the NFL Trust uh, Committee, right with the NFL Legends. I brought that up, and they were like, "Oh, well, you know, this and that is too expensive. We can't do that." And I like I brought up the fact that Major League Baseball has it. If you play one game yep. in, in in the big you one like, game, they were like, "Whoa, that." But they, they were like, oh, that's not true. Let me oh, we got to check on that. So I reached out to my guy who played. Right. And he was like, absolutely. And they weren't, they weren't comfortable with even talking about that because they were like, well, the premiums and, and it would be too mm. expensive. And this is the, this is the largest uh, American sports franchise by a mile talking about it would be too expensive. Like, that's it, crazy to me. It, it is absolutely crazy. It's already doable. If you look at baseball's, uh, what the players get, and you look at even the NBA, it's embarrassing that the NFL players just don't don't rank. Uh, you know, and, and then you saw, like, uh, Ephraim, a lot of players had their panties in a bunch when, when, when they were talking about how much Tony Romo signed with CBS, right? <laughs> right. It has nothing to do with them. Right, but but they were all worked up. No, but they they were mad about that, but not mad enough to fight. You know, for a great CBA. That's what I'm talking about. Is you're busy you, worrying man, about that? And I'm telling you, whenever you start throwing money around, and the owners know this, the players fixate on that. They fixate on the dollar amount. Oh, we get if we add one more game. They're not thinking health wise or long term ramifications. You know, because people say, well, you choose to play football. Yeah, we choose to play football, but it's also uh, our God-given right for our employer to take care of our medical needs that uh, were happened during while we're on the job. Any job in the, on the planet does that. Right? Yeah, you, 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 have a special, and you have a special job where, I mean, I, Rob and I aren't generally in danger of, of having some type of ailment later in life that's going to be related to our job. Football is different. You know what I'm saying? You guys do. It's going to happen. If you play enough, you don't even have to play a long time. But they're not even starting about talking like, okay, we're going to try this out. We're going to start all players that play 10 years or more. We're going to start them with lifetime health care. All players. And then you just go incrementally to where all players are covered you know, over the course of, of, of a long period of time. They don't even want to broach it for any guy. But the play, you so, play, but, so you do, you blame the, do you blame the owners or, I mean, they're both to blame somewhat, but how much right. of this is on the players for not fighting for A them? lot of it's on the players. A lot of it's on the players because if it was serious enough, uh, the owners would have to, t- they know that they can get around that by throwing money out and percentages. Yep. Right? We'll give, we'll give you 48 Point five, forty seven point five percent of the revenue. They know they can manipulate that by throwing money out there because current players 
they're fixated on the dollar amount and and minimum salaries going up and all of that. Dog, my minimum salary when I was playing was one hundred and sixty four thousand dollars. I started all nineteen games, including the Super Bowl. Wow. wow. Hey, Ephraim, real quick, last thing from me, Dak. Where where does this wind up? Is he franchise tagged? I guess is it what is it Monday if they even go through with business. Yeah, he'd have to. If he, I mean, the fact that he's not taking the deal. I, I mean, I, I guess if you can get more, get more. But I mean, it, yeah, I could. I would consider Dak a top ten quarterback. I wouldn't consider him the best quarterback in the league by far. I don't think he should come with any anywhere close to what Patrick Mahomes is going to get. Which I mean, that would be ridiculous. I didn't think Jared Goff deserved the, the contract he got, but that that's kind of set the pace, right? You don't have to be the best quarterback to get the best deal. It's what the market bears. Matthew and, Stafford and, at one point got paid the highest, right? He Garoppolo. had the biggest contract. Exactly. You can go on down yep. the line. Yeah, yeah. Eat from great stuff, man. Be safe out there. Have a great weekend. You too, brothers. All right, Thank man. you. Peace. Uh, Rudy Gobert, Rob, he has become – I would even say wrongly, because I was going to say rightly or wrongly. I'll say wrongly in this case. He's become the kind of the face of the coronavirus as far as the sports are concerned, pro and college, because everything, you know, started happening after he had the coronavirus. Yeah, and, and the, he was the first one. So right, that was the right. first name. So people kind of, they identify with it. Right. Yep. And, and to make it worse is obviously he was mocking it. You know when he the video came out of him touching. I don't the know how many times that happens. The reporters, Isn't that crazy? You know, the, 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 no, that 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 is incredibly ironic. It is. Incredibly it happens ironic. though. Ironic. Yeah. That the that people was who mock it or you know say something about it or or it winds up happening to them and it's just I I don't know what that is. Of That's, all the players, right? Yes. There's probably gonna be a what twenty probably twenty players in the league that have it or something like that. Yeah, there'll be more, he's, but just he's, that he's the, the first one, one. <laughs> that it happened to. But apparently, it was beyond just him touching the reporters' microphones and phones and and you know tape recorders and things like that. The reports uh, coming out say that in the locker room, he actually was behaving that way with teammates, and he was touching teammates and, you know, touching their belongings and things like that, mocking having the coronavirus, too. Now, he didn't know he had it, but he I was, was going to say, no, that's no, the one thing. He, that, yeah. I, and so none of this was done maliciously. If he knew and he was doing that, that's totally, yeah, that, that's no, where. I, I, that would be, that would be terrible. That that's inexcusable. I can't imagine right. him there. I can't imagine any player doing that. I I, I agree with you. Yeah. That's why I can't be that hard. He was playing, you know, and and being immature and not really thinking of the seriousness of what's going on, and then that it's revealed that he has it. So everything you look back and go, why was he doing that? You know, why was he doing the things that he did and being irresponsible? See, I think it's easier for me to. And I, you know, forgive him, obviously, but it's easy for me to forgive, for lack of a better term, what he did with the reporters because I actually do think he had good, as ill-advised as it was, I think he had good intentions. I think he was trying to show them, look, as far as I'm concerned, you guys could come in the locker room. I don't think any of you, I'm not afraid of any of you contaminating me and, you know, things like that. I think that's what he was trying to show. But in the locker room, Again, it's not the worst thing in the world, but I that goes beyond like that just shows me his maturity level is very low. Because you're not that's not making a statement by touching your teammates and touching their clothes or whatever it was. You know, that's just silliness beyond what I think, you know, a typical 26-year-old or whatever he is should have. Like I get it, he made the public statement in public, so all the cameras saw it. But in the locker room, in private, you're just fooling around. You know, there's always the silly guys in the locker room that go around doing ridiculous things. That's what I'm thinking of Gobert now. I think he's just immature beyond his years or right. not up to his years. Uh, absolutely. Uh, just to, to make light of, of the whole circumstance and situations. I, I get it. You were trying to show some affection to the reporters and say, "Hey, I'm cool." Right. I get that. You know, I, this is. I know this sucks for you. He could have just said, "I know this sucks for you guys that you don't have the access that you once had." But I want you to know, I'm going to be here for you if you need me, and if they need to pull me outside, 
the locker room because you need to talk to me. I'm, I'm willing right. to come out. That's You know what I mean? Right. That would have been a mature way to handle that it. That would have been, and you would have <laughs> been like, wow, that dude is, right. look at what he's saying to the writers. I would be like, nah, that's a go-to guy. That's a that's a stand-up and then, guy. And you know what? If he would have been, which uh, let's, he would have been, I guess, the first guy to get it, he would have been a sympathetic figure. Instead of one, a guy that's one hundred being mocked and you one hundred percent, right? Yep. You would have been like, "Oh, he was the guy who who put out an olive branch to the yep. media. He was yep. the guy who said that he would do anything if they needed him." Blah blah blah. He would uh, that it would be totally different. He was trying to do that, Chris, but he did it in the wrong way. Yep, yep. And and now the reports, Rob, are saying his teammates are frustrated with him, so he's gonna have some. I mean, he and Mitchell, Donovan Mitchell, who also has it. I guess they're very close. But uh, Mitchell and the other players, according to reports, are upset with him. So we'll see, you know, could this derail, you know, the Jazz in any way, um, you know, just with their relationships? We'll see.